for do, let's go right ahead and go into this second segment. Also, the score for the Serbian game against the Puerto Rico uh, against Puerto Rico right now it's a hundred to sixty two. So I'm probably going to talk a little bit about that. Maybe in the third segment, depending on when this... Because there's one minute left in this game. So I'll probably move it from the fourth segment over to the third segment instead of, you know, talking about the third segment first. And then I'll just I'll just switch the two of them because I don't think it's really that big of a deal. And we are on a roll with Olympic basketball right now. So I might as well go ahead and continue to talk about it before I focus on something that previously happened. So in this... Hold on, because let me go ahead and fix the light real quick, because I don't know why it's lowering the brightness. There we go. So, the FIBA MVP, I'm not even going to lie, that is something that I have never heard of. Like, I've never really paid that much attention to the Olympics when I was a toddler before, and I honestly had no idea that there was an award for the you know, the FIBA, like, for FIBA basketball and being the MVP. I figured there was, like, some sort of way that you get recognized, but I didn't think there was actually a FIBA MVP. Like, I'm going to try and figure out when the FIBA MVP, like, started. Like, when did the award first get handed out? But apparently this is, like, um... In the FIBA Basketball World Cup, this is obviously, th th there's a thing like that. So I understand it in the World Cup, but I didn't realize that there was, you know, a, there was one for the Olympics as well. Like, I didn't realize that they also counted the, they also had a poll for Olympic-like players, like, to win the, the MVP. I thought it was just for FIBA, but turns out it's for, like, every single form of international basketball that could, you know, that could ever exist, right? So with that in mind, it also surprised me who was in number one on this list. Spoiler alert, it's not LeBron. It used to be LeBron, but now it's not. For some reason, the number one, well, the athlete with the most votes on this list, this is only like a, this is a vote for like the, the fans. The way that the FIBA basketball MVP works is that the vote is divided between three three outlets. The fans, the media, and the league's coaches. So they have a huge... They have each one-third of a say in who should get the MVP, right? And now this seems like the Puerto Rican game is ending. There's nine seconds left. The final score is looking to be 107 to 66. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about that game in the third segment. And so for the, for the MVPs, right, for the FIBA basketball MVPs, the number one player on this list is Leo Men Miendel, I believe that's how you pronounce his name, for the Brazilian team. He has 9,621 votes. And you're probably wondering, why is he ranked number one? And this answer is going to shock you as much as it's going to, as it shocked me before. I don't know. I have no idea why this athlete has the most votes. I genuinely have no idea. Other than maybe it's because, you know, he is Brazilian and there's so many people in Brazil and so many people love to and so many Brazilians they love to just vote for the best player and that's really the only thing that I can really think about like that's the only thing that I can think about because the fact that he has more votes than LeBron doesn't make any sense to me and you might think, okay, well, maybe he's playing. And I thought to myself, like, I really, I genuinely thought to myself, looking at this list at first, that, like, oh, well, he's, maybe he had some fantastic performances in, in all of these games. No, he didn't. In the last game that he played against Germany, he went 2 for 12 and only had 6 points. And he also went 1 for 9 from inside the arc and 1 for 3 from outside the arc. He's literally only hit 2 shots in yesterday's game and then in the game before that because you know he played a game before that i'm just going to try and find the box scores real quick of the game before that brazil they played france right and the 
his box score, let's go ahead and read his box score. He only he ended the game with 14 points and was 5 for 13 from the field. So I have no idea why him, of all the athletes that they could have voted for, was is number one. I genuinely have no idea. He has had the worst efficiency rating on his team, also the worst box plus minus on his team, and everything about him is just like, honestly, it might be a troll pick. That might be what it is, because if you guys remember, like, I mean, well, not really if you guys remember, but it's like everyone in these basketball votings, they love to be trolls. Like, I remember all the way back in, I want to say maybe 2017, maybe 2018, probably 2017, the the player that had the second most votes from the fans was Zaza Pachulia. Like, Zaza Pachulia. The guy that has never done anything on the Warriors. Like, arguably the weakest link on the Golden State Warriors when they won in 2017 in the entire starting lineup. He had the second most of, most votes. He had more votes than Kawhi Leonard, more votes than, like, Anthony Davis. And he was just not it. He was not the kind of player. And because of, and like, he was still second in the, in the voting. So I feel like this is sort of like the same example. I think it's a troll pick because there's no way that a player like him should have more votes than the player that's second on this list, LeBron James. Like, LeBron is second in MVP voting on this list. I would have never thought I'd see the day. And he has 9,243 votes as of right now. Again, you know, I had no idea whether or not the votes are going to increase later on during the day or if they're going to stay the same. But this is, you know, this is the voting and this is, you know, who's second on the list. Obviously, he should be first. And the player right after him, you know, Kevin Durant, definitely should be in the running as well. And, you know, being the two best players on the Olympic team, it would make sense that these two are holding the two and the three spot. They should really hold the one and the two spot, but, you know, people want to be funny. Now... Giannis Antetokounmpo, he is fourth on this list, and quite frankly, I mean, the only thing that's really holding him back from winning this MVP, in my opinion, is the fact that his team is still winless. Like, he still has yet to take, uh, to give G Greece a win, but you can't really blame him, because in every single game, he's dropped at least 28 points or more, and he's also been able to get a double-double in all of his games as well. Like, his performance is nothing to be is nothing to really mess with like it's really just he's playing phenomenal basketball and really if he would have won in any of those games like if he would have won in the first game maybe if he would have won in the second game and advanced his team he would have definitely had a good shot at winning this thing in my opinion next on this list for number five is Jose Alvarado. Now, he is the best player on the Puerto Rican squad, but the fact that Puerto Rico has lost in by double digits in almost every single game that they played in, don't think he should be in this list at all. Same applies with Tremont Waters for the Puerto Rican team again. I don't think anybody on the Puerto Rican team should even be on this poll. Now, and it, it, really, it really stinks because the two other players below them are both from South, are both playing for South Sudan. So you have Karlik Jones, he should definitely be in the like in the running for the most valuable player just because of what he's doing for South Sudan. The same with Wenning and Gabriel. He got some he got some popularity for talking and spreading his opinions about playing for South Sudan. And of course the two big men that should always be in the MVP running for international basketball Victor Wembanyama and Nikola Jokic, they're both in the 9 and the 10 spot on this list. And directly below him, directly below Jokic, again in the voting is Shai Gilgis Alexander. So it's been really tough for Shai. He's been, he hasn't even, honestly, he hasn't even been the best player on his team, but he's still in the top voting for MVP. Again, this is the fans voting, like the fans and their opinions. So it makes sense why, you know, like some of these players are on this list early. I mean, Victor makes total sense for being on this list, but players like Jose Alvarado and players like Waters and, you know, players like this guy right here, should they shouldn't be on this list at all. Like, I'm sorry to say it, but if you cannot lead your team to wins and if you're like, 
if you're not even scoring 30 points in the Olympics, I'm sorry, you should not even be considered for an award like this. And unless, like, you have to be winning. Like, you gotta be winning. And I, I'm not really a big fan of these, you know, of this poll. Again, this is just, like, you know, the fan voting, so it makes sense why the poll is really, really bad. But, I, again, like, how can it, like, what are we doing? Like, what are y'all doing? That is really the big question that I have, because what on earth is going on? Like, why... Why do you have to be, why do you have to vote for this player when you just, you know, you know he doesn't deserve it? But, but I digress. So that's really all that I have to say about the, the FIBA MVP list. Really, it was just, you know, me getting upset at the fact that LeBron James wasn't in number one because it genuinely doesn't make any sense. I literally have never heard of that um, Brazilian dude up until now. Like, I've never heard of Leo Mendil before up until now. And his performances haven't warranted me to even, like, you know, figure out who he was. Like, his performances were atrocious in these previous games. And he does have he does have a history of playing really well for the Brazilian team. Like, I'm not going to deny that, but it's just, like, it's just not needed after these last few games. Like, these, they're, they're both losses, and they're both horrible losses, as a matter of fact. So, that's all that I really have to say. So, with that, I'm going to go ahead and go into the next segment, which I said was going to be a review of the previous game between Serbia and Puerto Rico. So I'm just going to go ahead and talk about that in the next segment right after this short break. So be sure to stay tuned and I'll be right back. Looking for your daily fix of sports talk without having to pay for it? GSMC Sports Network is available on YouTube. Just search GSMC Sports Network. Get your fix of daily sports talk shows on YouTube absolutely free. NFL, college football, NBA, MLB, MMA, UFC, fantasy football, and so much more. GSMC Sports Network has shows running all day long with new sports shows starting every two hours. Just like on your favorite cable sports channel, except GSMC Sports Network is absolutely free. Just search GSMC Sports Network on YouTube to catch one of your new favorite shows, like the GSMC College Football Podcast, Chip Shot Football Podcast, Hoops and Heels Women's Sports Podcast, GSMC Basketball Podcast, and so many more. Check it out for yourself. GSMC Sports Network, now available on YouTube absolutely free. Search GSMC Sports Network on YouTube right now. 